This is my implementation of the 1630 Moog Bode frequency shifter. Now from the onset I'll say this is a digital implementation or digital homage to the original Moog frequency shifter. It's designed to be easily constructed by the average DIYer. It uses a Teensy 4.0 processor module together with the Teensy audio shield and then there is a circuit board that holds the jacks, panel controls and very basic audio and CV interface circuitry all of which can be constructed using just through hole components. I have now patched a sine wave from a Behringer 921 oscillator in and I shall just turn that up so at the moment on the zero scope we're just showing the A output and I have the scale set to 50 Hz at the moment we have no shift so if I turn the shift control up So if I turn the shift control up, we can hear the pitch increase and only just see it on the zero scope. And similarly, if I turn the pitch control down, so if I now go up to the scale range of 500 hertz, we'll see a bigger effect. It's about to go through zero and then the frequency will increase again. If I now switch to the 5 kilohertz scale, up, and if I now turn it down, so we're dropping lower, 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 but we've gone through zero so now the pitch is increasing again. Now switch the zero scope to two channel operation. So one channel is the A output, one output is the B output. So if I and I'm set on the 500 hertz scale. So if we now turn the shift control up, and if we just catch it, you see one channel pitch is increasing, the other is decreasing. And if I now turn the shift control down, the reverse is, is true. The lock is better on the scope on the upper trace because that's what the trigger is coming from. So you can see the frequency go down, but the lower trace frequency go up. And vice versa. Okay, I've now switched back to single channel on the zero scope, and I'm now going to turn down the level of the input sine wave, and as you can see, the squelch operates. So most of the time through the rest of this demonstration the squelch is probably not going to operate because of the relatively high signal levels I'm using. The frequency shifter module has a very simple wave file player um, built into the software. Uh, this is something I initially used for testing but it was so useful I thought I would um, keep it the software in there. Um, it just makes use of the SD card slot on the Teensy audio shield and it's, it's very simple it will just sequentially play through whatever WAV files it finds on the SD card. Ah, so now we do see the squelch operating. So we're on 50 hertz scale 
Onto the path you once made Moving to the 500 hertz scale Switching to the next file Okay, I'm now going to switch to the exponential scale. So we start off at 2 hertz shift. Because the Teensy Audio Shield only has two outputs, because it's intended for normal stereo left-right operation, I had to take an alternative approach. So normally, as configured, the software has the A output and the B output that, depending on the direction of shift from the shift control, will either be up or down. But we also, by use of the push button, if I press the button, wait for the LEDs to go off, I'm now in the centre position on the mixture control, so that means the A and the B outputs are the two out separate outputs. But if I turn the control to the left, the squelch LED goes on, and that means the mix output is now assigned to the A output. Conversely, if I turn to the right, the other LED goes on, and the mixture output is now assigned to the B output. Take my finger off the button, and those settings are now saved. I'm just going to re-plug to take the B output to the scope and also the audio output. So if we now start playing a file again you have to adjust the squelch So we're on the 50 hertz scale. So what we're getting is a mixture of the up and the down shift. Putting it on the 5 hertz scale. We can hear the interaction between the up and down shifted frequencies better. Let's change track. So therefore we've got, we've got about 2 hertz of shift up and 2 hertz of shift down. 4 hertz, 5 hertz. Let's just start hearing the effect. OK, I've now patched an LFO input or an attenuator and the white patch lead into the control input. I've reset the up and down shift mixtures so there is no mixed output. Let's just plug that in and let's start a track. I'm on the 50 hertz scale so that's normal pitch. Let's start modulating it. Try it on the 500 hertz scale.
So this is positive voltage only being sent into the control input, so we're modulating upwards only. Turning up the modulation rate. Or if you get ridiculous and put it in 5 kilohertz range.